Hi there, welcome to 1.14, which is on triglycerides, which are a type of lipid. Um, just as a sort of intro, just to remind you really, that lipids is kind of like a, a food group, if you like. Um, and lipids is a, a word that includes solid fats, which we usually call fats. And the liquid fats, which we usually call oils. Okay, so just because I think sometimes those words are a little bit confusing. So today we're looking at a specific lipid called a triglyceride. Okay, so let's have a look um, at the general shape. So it's always going to be drawn with something down the side, top to bottom, and then three things sticking out. Now, there's multiple ways that you could draw this. You could draw literally every carbon and hydrogen atom, etc., in the structure, or we could just draw some generic shapes like this. But they're all just representing the same thing um, using a different level of detail. So, thinking about the name, tri obviously means three. So, that's referring to these three bits sticking out over here. And these three things are called fatty acids. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so we've got three fatty acids, that's what the tri part is. And then we've got glycer, which is named for this bit, because this part here is a molecule of glycerol. So you would say that a triglyceride is made of one glycerol molecule and three fatty acids. Okay, so you can see why that, where those words come from, and that's our simple explanation of what it is. Um, the bonds that's joining the um, triglyceride together are called ester bonds. You don't need to know too much about these really, but you do need to know the names of them. The example would like to ask questions about different types of bonds. So they're asking you, for the glycosidic bonds in um, carbohydrates, the peptide bonds in proteins, and then these bonds, which are called ester bonds. Okay, so these ester bonds here are joining the fatty acids onto the glycerol molecule. Right? So ester bonds. And ester bonds are a type of covalent bond. That's really what you need to know. Um, if we were to form those bonds, so at the start, uh, we might have, for example, the glycerol like this. We might draw the fatty acids like this. If we want to add those together, obviously it's reversible. You can break them apart again. You'd make your molecule like this. If we wanted to add some labels, remember this is glycerol plus three fatty acids. Reversible reaction to make a triglyceride. Now, very similarly to the carbohydrates, in that when we're joining them together, that reaction is going to be called a condensation reaction. And when we're breaking them apart, digesting them, breaking them apart, we call that a hydrolysis reaction. Remember, because it's creating a molecule of water and using a molecule of water, remember, your plus water on the side of your product as well. Um, if you wanted to know a little bit more detail about the fatty acid chains, they're basically hydrocarbons. So these chains that we've been drawing like this, if you wanted to draw them in more detail, they're just like the hydrocarbons you do GCSC chemistry. Uh, 
and that there will join on to the glycerol molecule. Okay, um, the glycerol molecule that we've been drawing like this. If you want to draw that out in full, it's very similar. One side is OHs. Okay, now if you imagine putting the hydrocarbon chain on here for their fatty acid, okay, you can see then for the reaction to happen. And see where we get our molecule of water, our H2O, and obviously you'd have three fatty acids coming off there. So if it asks you what parts of the molecules are involved in making the bond between the glycerol and the fatty acids, you'd say that it's the OH hydroxyl group from the glycerol, um, and it's the end of the um, Hi, sorry, got interrupted by the phone. So this is like the really simple version, um, but I'm going to just draw you out uh, kind of the full version as well. So if it's just, this really doesn't come up a lot, but it's, it's better to be safe than sorry. So if we were to draw our glycerol again, we've got our carbons like so, our OH. Now, the end of that fatty acid is actually a little bit more complicated um, than just a hydrocarbon like your GCSE chemistry. So it's actually what we call a carboxyl group, which is COOH, COOH. So on this end, it's actually C double bond O, O. H okay so actually if we wanted to see where that hydrogen comes from it's not just a hydrogen stuck onto the carbon here it's actually a carbon a hydrogen kind of on the end of this molecule um, you will have come across COOH carboxyl groups when you do um, amino acid structure as well so you will be a little bit familiar with the COOH group and obviously if you do chemistry you are as well um, but that's actually what the end of the fatty acid looks like and that's where the hydrogen is that then forms the water molecule to form the ester bond to make the triglyceride okay um, that's so much less likely to be asked compared to the structure of glucose and the glycosidic bond so if you're getting overwhelmed with structures stick to learning your glucose um, and then your protein one as well they're, they're more, more common all right um if you wanted uh, the detail of drawing this bond, it is just like uh, just like the one you did for the glucose. So what happens is we take out all the bits that are in the circle. So the water molecule comes off. Then we're left with the oxygen. And I'm going to move that oxygen across. So the way you draw it, let's just draw it a different colour so it stands out, is here's our oxygen like that to the bond okay leave that double bond oxygen down there all right you need to do that three times for each of the um for each of the fatty acids now this chain of um hydrocarbon off the end of the uh the fatty acid molecule is obviously like a repeating pattern now i've drawn like four just there um but if uh it was actually really, really long. It might be too long to draw, okay? So sometimes what happens is rather than drawing the structure out like that, you might see the right and R, okay? So R just represents something else. So in that case, the R is just representing a chain of hydrocarbon, okay? But rather than writing it all out, um, let's have a little think about uh, lipids now. So, lipids can be saturated or they can be unsaturated. Let's have a look at those. Let's type it. It's a bit easier for you to read. 
so situated. situated. And they can be unsaturated. All right, so we've got two types of lipids. And the difference between saturated and unsaturated lipids is the, uh, the hydrocarbon chain. So uh, think about margarine and think about butter that have been in the fridge. Um, the margarine is going to be easier to spread, isn't it? And the reason why the margarine is easier to spread is because it's got some unsaturated lipids. OK, so let's put e.g. margarine. Uh, that makes it easier to spread. Whereas butter, on the other hand, let's put it here. Oof. E.g. butter makes it harder to spread. Obviously, just the opposite. Now, which one of those two is uh, going to increase your risk of cardiovascular disease the most? Is saturated. Let's write that under there. So it increases your risk of cardiovascular disease. So you are healthier in some ways if you eat margarine rather than butter um, and it's all to do with the hydrocarbons so we know about hydrocarbons being saturated and unsaturated uh, from our GCSE chemistry um, and it's to do with there being a double bond in there so if it's uh, saturated it means they're all single bonds which is how I've been drawing them so far so um, all the carbon to carbon bonds in the hydrocarbon of the fatty acid are single bonds. Whereas the unsaturated, they're not all single bonds. We've got at least one double bond. Okay, so at least one of the carbon to carbon bonds in the hydrocarbon of fatty acid are double. All right, so saturated means they're all single bonds, unsaturated means we've got at least one double bond. That's what that's what that means. Um if it's saturated, it means that there's no double bonds. It means that every carbon is going to have at least two hydrogen atoms attached and it doesn't have any capacity to hold any more hydrogens. OK, I'll draw it and show you that in a moment as well. OK, so it's got no capacity to hold any more hydrogen. On the other hand, uh, unsaturated means it has a double bond, but there's actually different types of unsaturated. So we could have mono unsaturated or we could have poly unsaturated. So mono unsaturated, first of all, the word mono in biology, we always use that to mean one. So that means that we've got one double bond. OK. And where you've got the double bond, it causes a kink in the structure, like a bend in the um, hydrocarbon. So it's not straight. So this causes a kink, a bend. All right. Polyunsaturated, I'm sure you can work out. <coughs> means that we've got uh, two or more bonds again between the carbons. Um, so you've got multiple things in the chain. Um, so let's have a go at drawing them. Let's see what they would look like. So first of all, the saturated. So this is what we've been drawing so far. So remember that we've actually got our COOH group on this end. So C double bond O. OH, okay, but the rest of it is just hydrocarbon. 
So each carbon needs four bonds. Okay, so we've got this chain of carbons. Each carbon needs four bonds. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And on the end of each of those bonds is a hydrogen. All right? And that's what it looks like if it's saturated. If it's unsaturated, we've still got our um, COOH on one end. So C double bond O, O, H. I might just put a little circle around that just because it looks a bit confusing, doesn't it? Just so you can see that that's the carboxylic acid group there. COOH, COOH, there. Um, now, let's draw the first carbon normally, but let's say this carbon to this carbon is a double bond. Now, we've said that the carbon needs four bonds, so this carbon's got one, two, three, four. This carbon has actually already got one, two, three. No, it's already got three, so it only needs one more. So I can't do that and that because then it's got five. All right. So the reality is what happens is that we get a kink. So rather than the double bond going straight, it actually goes up at an angle like that to the next carbon. This one actually only needs one more bond so it's just got one more h well, this one would then go up at an angle again to the next carbon this one just needs one to have one two three four and then we go back to having four on each sorry i crushed into the other molecule that is an h not an n <laughs> looks rubbish let's rub that oh And you can see how by having that one double bond there, we've got this kink in the molecule. And you can see that if we had another double bond, we get another kink, and another double bond, we get another kink. So that was monounsaturated because it's got one double bond. Uh, let's just draw a line between those. Because they've nearly crashed into each other. There you go. <laughs> Makes it a bit less confusing if you're trying to copy it out. So we've got monounsaturated fats with a single double bond, polyunsaturated fats with more than one double bond. Now, this one here is unsaturated. If it's something's unsaturated, if you said something's unsaturated with water, you could add more water. So my jumper at the moment is dry. It's not saturated. I could add water to it. It would, it would take up a bit of water. Now, if I'd been out in a pouring rain, my clothes, you'd say, would be saturated. And that means... They won't absorb any more water. They're totally saturated. They can't take anything more. But this molecule here is unsaturated because it can take another hydrogen. If we were to break that double bond there, okay, in theory, what we could do is if we broke that double bond, we could have a bond just here and a bond just here with a hydrogen on each. And if we change that into a single bond, We'd make it saturated, wouldn't we? So it has got the ability to add more hydrogens. Okay. In a way, that's that's not the chemistry that we need to know. That's not how it, quite how it works, but that's the kind of concept behind it. Oops. <laughs> Try and get rid of those. So if it's unsaturated, it's got a double bond. It could have more hydrogens added to it. If it's saturated, they're all single bonds already. There's nowhere where we could add um, more hydrogens so it's saturated already it's already got as many as it possibly could have okay and that's the end